Hi, my name is BC Hoffman. Hey, I'm Adrian Bustamante. And this is a head-to-head -head macaroni and cheese recipe war. All right, today I am doing a mac and cheese recipe by Giada De Laurentiis. I'm gonna give macaroni a makeover. I'm gonna toss it with a spicy blend of tomatoes, mushrooms, and spinach. Then I'm gonna bake it with three different kinds of cheese. Uh, it's a little different in that it has a little more vegetable and a little less cheese to it, but for the most part, it kind of keeps to what most people like about mac and cheese. It's obviously got cheese, some nice macaroni to it. But then like I said, we're adding things like mushrooms, spinach, stewed tomatoes, uh, a little extra pepper flakes for some spice. And I am doing Bobby Flay's macaroni and cheese. And My strategy for this throwdown is to give traditional mac and cheese a little class. I'm countering Delilah's southern style macaroni and cheese with a recipe inspired by Italian carbonara, a sauce made from eggs, cheese, and bacon. What's really cool about Bobby Flay's mac and cheese is he takes it back to the classic carbonara style mac and cheese and sauce, and he's gonna actually put in flour, milk, some amazing pancetta! And he's using five cheeses. He's gonna use white cheddar, American yellow cheddar, and then I've got Fantina, Asiago, and a little Parmesan. And it's gonna be awesome, delicious, and amazing. And this is how you do a great side dish for Thanksgiving right here with this mac and cheese, because I'm gonna win. So uh, that being said, let's start. So the first thing you wanna do with Bobby Flays is you definitely wanna get your oven started up. Um, very first thing, I already have mine going. It's at 375. I believe yours calls for 350, right? Yes, sir. So let's do an even in between. We'll say 360 since we're gonna both be cooking them in there at the same time. And in the meantime, you also want to butter up your pan. So I've got my baking dish right here. It's an eight by eight baking dish. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna butter that bad boy up. You wanna just make sure you get it on the sides, on the bottom. Keep the uh, paper on so that way you don't get messy hands. Or if you're like me, I like the messy hands. <laughs> you just so. don't care. I just go straight in. Okay, so pot's going hot. I'm gonna put a little oil in there, get the oil heated up, and then I'm gonna throw in my pancetta so I can get that nicely caramelized and browned on all sides. I started the same way. I buttered my eight by eight baking dish as well. So that's gonna be our last piece of the puzzle there. But then I'm also gonna start with heating up my pan with some olive oil and throwing some onions in, some of my mushrooms. So I'm throwing some cremini and some button mushrooms in, in there as well. Now Gianna makes a great point that the cremini mushrooms will add some great texture and flavor, which they will. So we're gonna saute these up for about mm, seven or eight minutes or so until you see the onions becoming nice and translucent and the button mushrooms and the cremini mushrooms get nice and tender and kind of changing a little bit of color as well. So my pancetta is gonna take about eight minutes to get brown on all sides. But let's be honest, if you're cooking right now, what would you rather have in your pot? Would you rather have onions and mushrooms, or would you rather have some nice pancetta going down, getting <laughs> ready, because this is a war. We're battling head to head here. So my pancetta is ready. I'm just gonna put my pancetta on there. Pancetta is the Italian bacon, so it's fitting that I'm using it right here. And it basically is just going to be salt cured pork belly, essentially, as opposed to the smoked one that we traditionally get, our bacon here. All right, my onions and my mushrooms are all done. So now I'm gonna add a couple things. I'm gonna add some tomatoes to the dish, as well as some frozen spinach. Now, so I'm gonna add these two in here to everything. I'm gonna mix these all up again, kind of heat it up in our pan here. So the reason why I'm using the slotted spoon is because I'm leaving that pork fat in there. That pork fat is going to basically be the base of the flavor for our sauce. So I've got three tablespoons of flour I just threw into my pork fat right there. I'm just gonna give that a nice whisk. Make sure it's on a lower heat. You don't wanna burn it. Just like you don't wanna burn up your pancetta that you're using because you just want it nicely browned. Now if you like it crispier, by all means, cook it crispier. But you are gonna still cook this in the oven as well. I had to give it a try just to make sure it was delicious and nutritious and oh so tasty. Put this on the heat and get that milk nice and hot. The key is you definitely wanna have hot milk that you add in because it's gonna be a quick process. So when you add in your milk, you're gonna then basically just essentially dissolve the flour and the, and the pork fat. And then you're just gonna have the cheese go right in. It's gonna be a quick process. You're gonna melt everything up, then finish it off with adding in the last pancetta and the cayenne and some amazing thyme. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that in a second. 
Now I'm working on now some breadcrumb mixture. Now the breadcrumbs are gonna go a little bit on the bottom of our baking dish and then over the top of our macaroni just to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of flavor too. So this is the beginning of some addition to some cheese finally to this macaroni and cheese dish. Now I'm actually adding some Parmesan and some Romano to the breadcrumbs. And my mixture is all done with the spinach, mushrooms, tomatoes, and onions. So now we're gonna add them to my macaroni. It is called mac and cheese for a reason yeah. because we are using the macaroni pasta. Now we did cheat and we actually made the pasta in advance. Now there's a couple steps that you wanna do when you are doing the pasta. First off, it is macaroni and cheese that we're doing, so you do not wanna put oil in your boiling water oh. before you put the pasta in. Oh, why? Why, you ask? I'll tell you. Because you want that pasta to be nicely coated with the cheese sauce that you're making for it. Otherwise, the fat soluble that's gonna be covering it and the oil that's gonna be covering it, it's not gonna have that and it's just gonna fall right off. You wanna make sure that you get that. So you're gonna also make sure that you cook it al dente. And the reason why you're gonna be cooking it al dente is because you're still gonna be cooking it in the oven. So you want just a hair under al dente when you pull it out. The only true way to test it is to actually taste it. And that's how you know what al dente is, is it's to the tooth. So if it's got a little texture to it and it's a little harder, now not super hard, just slightly hard, so it's gonna be slightly undercooked, that's what you're going for when you actually have your al dente. Now I'm adding the mozzarella cubes to my dish. Now this will kind of, they'll start melting just a little bit because of the heat from the pasta, which if it was just coming out of the water would still be hot, and also the heat from my vegetable mix here. Now what I'm also gonna put in it is a little bit of nutmeg. Now the nutmeg is obviously gonna add some little bit of flavor to it, and it's very common in a lot of Italian dishes, but we're gonna use fresh nutmeg, I'm just gonna grate it over the top. I actually just put my, uh, my hot milk, and then the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your egg yolks. I've got three egg yolks. I'm just gonna give them a quick break up and quick, 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 quick whisk. Because you're just gonna throw that right in to your pan, and you're gonna give them a quick whisk because you don't wanna cook them like that right away. The other reason why you do this is the starch opens up when you're actually cooking it. I might be adding a little extra cheese because who doesn't like it? So I've placed a little bit more Romano and a little more Parmesan in there and we'll see how it turns out. Once this is all mixed up, I'll plop it in my dish and then I'll show you how we top it off. But what I'm doing right here is I'm gonna go with my white cheddar. And white cheddar is actually, if you wanna go with Irish white cheddar, which uh, Bobby Flay uses in his recipe, I'm gonna use about eight ounces and I'm gonna just throw that in there. Then I'm gonna throw in my Asiago. He uses about six ounces of Asiago. And I'm gonna throw in my Fontina. I'm gonna throw in my American cheddar. Again, these are sharp cheeses. The sharpness is gonna stand out in your sauce. And the last thing I'm adding is I'm adding in my Parmesan. Throw that in. The other thing is, as soon as you're done cooking your macaroni, make sure that you run it under cold water. Then I'm gonna throw my sauce right in there. Boom, watch this come out. That is Tasty. sexy. So I just poured everything into my bowl right here. I've got the sauce. Now I'm gonna add the last finishing touches. One, pancetta. You're wondering, what's he gonna do with that? It's going right in here. And then I'm gonna take my cayenne pepper. Boom! Right on in there. And then I'm gonna take my chopped parsley. All we're gonna do is give that a nice stir, and then it's ready to go right into my baking dish. Now I've been transferring all my pasta mixture into the baking dish as well. So I just kind of easily put it in here. You can just slide it in. You want to make sure it's just nice and even over the top. It's not kind of mounds and whatnot because I want to get a nice even bake. And the reason I want that is because I'm going to add my breadcrumbs and cheese mixture to the top of it. Now it's going to give it that little extra crunch, a little extra texture as well. So it should be a nice little addition to the dish. When you're adding the mixture, you want to make sure you keep an eye out for the mozzarella cubes because obviously since it's a macaroni and cheese dish, you want to make sure all the cheese you can gets into your baking dish. So just make sure that if you miss a few cubes, you might toss them in a little bit. All the cheese is gonna help. See, what I really like about mine is this looks like macaroni and cheese. That looks like casserole. <laughs> so I'm ready to go right here with my baking dish. I'm literally gonna just take this and I'm gonna just pour it in. Now, the key is, look at that, look at that. That, that is look good. amazing. Here, I've added, you can see the top layer with all my breadcrumbs try to get it evenly over the whole dish to make sure it keeps that nice texture and crust. What I'm also gonna do is add a few pieces of butter to the top. It's gonna add just a little bit of flavor, but it's also gonna create that nice brown color that you're looking for when it's all said and done, so. I'm good to go. Myself I'm going as straight well. in the oven. Let's, Let's do it! Let's you're go. going down in the oven. All 
All right, our macaroni and cheese dishes are out of the oven, so it is time to see which one of these recipes is the better one. Boom! All right, so you want to start with yours? I really am interested in your super cheesy dish. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's do it. Bobby Flay's right here. Got to make sure I get a little nice pancetta. and bubbly when we pulled it out. Pancetta and crispiness. Mm. Um, yeah. I love it. Yeah, no, overall it's a really good dish. I mean, it just reminds me of a really a really old school macaroni style. You have that nice, that crispy top to it and that creamy, creamy center. It's it's a really, really tasty, tons of tons of flavor in that dish. Let's try this now. It's it's better cheese. with the cheese that you put in there. Really? The extra cheese, cheese that you put in there. Here's the plus and minuses of both these dishes. The plus is, is with Giada's, you've got a healthier version of a mac and cheese. You've got kids uh, incorporating vegetables with their macaroni and cheese, but it's not intended for kids because really when kids get mac and cheese, they don't want veggies in their mac and cheese. They don't want a healthy version and they definitely don't want that extra spice that you have with the chili pepper flakes that you used in there. So that one set aside, not so much for kids. And then with Bobby Flay's, the main downside to this one is it's a souped up adult version of a mac and cheese. Classic, yes, but expensive. Is even with these two dishes being as good as they are and being kind of, like you said, souped up mac and cheeses, is I think children would still want a basic macaroni and cheese, whether it's out of a box or whether it's even just. I want a basic and, mac yeah. and cheese. So I think like, these are great dishes and these are great twists on the macaroni and cheese. Again, this is a war, so there has to be one victor in this war. So that being said, whose macaroni and cheese in this recipe war is the winner? Well, I mean, just on the basis of cheese, cheesiness, I'm gonna have to go with Bobby Flay's recipe. I mean, it just, it does give me more of a macaroni and cheese style flair to it. I'm, I'm gonna go with Bobby Flay's too because it is just a very much more traditional creamy mac and cheese. My name is BC Hoffman. I'm Adrian Bustamante. This has been Recipe Wars, battle head to head, right here with macaroni and cheese. Bobby Flay's the victor, Giada de Laurentiis, not so much. Please subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and catch us next time when we battle this out on Recipe Wars.